run them over. Yeah, I am. Sure you can all hooked up. Yeah, you can all put it on the screen to start with so that... What? They can read the screen. No, but is everything down here hooked up? Yeah. It's right. Yeah, I think it's live right now, right? Yeah. You're, you're good. You're on. <laughs> So, 
few things we want to call to your attention uh, as we're working into things. A uh, couple of big changes coming up starting next week, first Sunday in April. Uh, and, and so you're going to have to kind of break out of the habits you've gotten into. Um, we're going to be having ushers pass offering again. So uh, don't, don't get too excited. I, I know Ron can hardly contain himself. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other hand, uh, please keep in mind, um, as you enter in, if, if you're still not comfortable or concerned or you happen to have a cold or uh, uncontrollable cough and those sorts of things, uh, you might want to drop it in the plate or in the bucket as you come in beforehand, but otherwise we'll be passing the buckets for the uh, noisy offering for our special missions emphasis, as well as the offering plate. Uh, next Sunday is a celebration of communion, and so we will be offering the sacrament in the pews, passing those as well, but we will have the um, prepackaged elements still, if you prefer to receive it that way. Uh, again, for many of the same reasons. So we want to try to do that in a way that's respectful and safe for everyone. Looking on down the road a little bit, real quick. Um, Holy Week. A, a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, there's a we've got a group within the church who are working putting together the reenactment of the Last Supper, which will be our Monday Thursday service, and everyone is encouraged to come and worship in that time. Uh, the sacrament will be shared during the service, so keep that in mind. Let folks know it's at 8 o'clock, and yes, Monday Thursday is on Thursday again this year. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just, we, we have a little fun with those questions. Uh, Good Friday, the next day, um, we will be having a community crosswalk at noon, uh, along with several of the other churches in town. And the crosswalk is going to begin in the parking lot across the west and meander through town with stops for scripture readings and then make its way back here. So beginning then here at the parking lot, probably uh, 45 minutes in, in length roughly. If you are able and are want to come, we, we need folks to carry the cross. So you're welcome to come and be a part of that or just walk along with it. Or if you don't think you can, it's not going to be a really long route. I think they said their guesstimate is just shy of a mile, uh, if, if that far. It just goes down the block, a couple blocks, and then to the west down to uh, around 1st Street and then makes its way back up. So it's not real far. Maybe less than a mile. I'm walking. I don't know. Far enough? Far is it? <laughs> I guess if we get tired, you sit down and rest until we come back the other way. Probably closer to a half. Closer to a half. Then uh, Sunday Easter Sunday morning, we are going to have a hopefully genuine sunrise worship. Hopefully it won't be cloudy that morning. We're going to have sunrise worship at 6. Can you get up that early? Well, if you can't, we will have regular worship at 10. But sunrise worship at 6. We'll be having breakfast following worship, 6.45-ish, 6.50-ish, 7-ish. Well, probably not. Yeah, somewhere in that range. So if you, if you aren't able to come to the early worship or you want to pop in for breakfast, you, you certainly can do that. Um, then we're going to have an Easter egg hunt at 9 o'clock. And so we are looking to you to volunteer for two things. Number one, we, we need folks to fill plastic eggs with great treats. All right? So we, we need that. And, and so if you're willing to do that, you might want to let Shelly know at the office so that we can uh, make adjustments if we have to really get desperate and start twisting arms, but I know we won't have to do that. But anyway, so maybe maybe a couple dozen for each family or person that chooses to volunteer to do this. 
And if you want to put a special treat in one of the eggs, you're welcome to do that if you want to. Okay. Give somebody a gift certificate to the coffee steamer. We've heard of a few folks that really think that'd be a cool thing to find. In there. Uh, or maybe a gift certificate to the car wash. That might be more useful. <laughs> Uh, and then, let's see, what else am I forgetting? My American my, my rambling. Um, worship at 10. Anything I've missed? No, but it sounds pretty good. <laughs> All right. Well, if I remember later on, and I probably will weave it in somehow or another. It's great to be with you this morning. Let's take a moment and listen to the prelude as we begin worship. Thank mm -hmm. you.
are our most recent updates as far as prayer concerns. Um, we also have been asked to add another, uh, just recently uh, has been shared that Joe Kale, some of you might know him from family in the community, uh, serving on the school board in the past and so forth, uh, has been diagnosed with cancer that uh, is pretty, uh, sounds pretty serious as far as spread throughout, so please remember him in your prayers and the family. Are there others that we should lift up this morning? <coughs> A couple of updates, I can't remember if I mentioned last week, but little Kylie, who was originally from Conorville, whose family's been in Haiti in admission, uh, who was hurt with her father and brother, then in Peoria, has been released from the hospital and is recovering with family back in the Conorville area. So um, we're grateful to hear that, but please continue to remember that family in prayer. Um, Shelly? Uh, we did find out that Ben Moran, she said that the doctor told her her cancer is gone. You hear that? Yeah, very good. We uh, rejoice with Deb and her family. That's wonderful news. Continue to pray. You know, she still has things that she struggles with, so we appreciate your ongoing prayers for her. All, uh, we should remember the Kafer family in our prayers. Gail Kafer passed away this past week. Okay. Dale? Dale. 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 Okay, I'm sorry. So please remember the Kafer family. And uh, Ron? Uh, Sharon saw Mrs. Prosper from here. Uh, this past week, and she said hello to anybody that might remember her. And then uh, she said at a uh, district leadership event in Pekin today, so uh, she's talking about disaster preparedness and connecting neighbors uh, programs. All right. So we rejoice to have some news on Charlotte. And uh, let's uh, pray for uh, good, informative, Constructive time that Sharon spends in people as they work on disaster preparedness. Uh, we do encourage you to continue to remember the Shifflet family in your prayers and uh, mine's father's death as well. Ukraine. Then the Ukraine, yes. Thank you for please continue to remember. Yes. Don Metz has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Okay, Don Ness. I did forget to mention one thing during the announcements, and I'll just mention this real quick. Um, the, the lifting up of ongoing support and prayer for the Ukraine. Um, today is... Um, Sunday when we celebrate the ministry of Own Court, that ministry of our church that makes it possible for us to do disaster assistance locally and all over the world and to be able to uh, have that commitment that when you give money through Own Court, every penny that you give goes to that assistance. That's possible because we once a year or so take special offerings to support Own Court itself. So, if you are able to make a special gift for um, for this morning, uh, that would be appreciated. It makes it possible for us to do that. Let's pray together for a moment. God, our Heavenly Father, we praise and glorify you for your goodness and faithfulness that fails us never. When we recall those words of promise, when we share those words of promise, at times folks will question. And yet, Lord God, as we look over the history of salvation, 
from the beginnings of human life up to this day, we see that you are the only one who remains faithful and true, who continues to place an unbelievable value on human life. And so, Lord, we continue to step out into the deep and cast our lot with you, with one another as the church of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for those who serve on our behalf. We pray for those in the military and ask for your blessing to continue to rest upon them and their service as they seek to give themselves to this necessary task of seeking to bring lasting peace. We pray for the ongoing conflict in the war in Ukraine and we continue to pray for those who have been aggressive, the leadership and the people behind the army of Russia. Lord, we pray for light. We pray for light to be shed abroad, that knowledge would come and awareness. We pray for the people of Ukraine and their desire to seek to defend themselves, to live as we so easily live in freedom. And yet we know that it never lasts without faithfulness. And Father, we remember that as we turn to you with those that are upon our hearts. We, we praise you for faithfulness that we see in miraculous healing and recovery. And we continue to earnestly plead with you for those who are facing what seems to be nothing but terrible news. Help us to be able to be a people who live in the midst, as the psalmist reminds us, who can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and be able to say that we can find your comfort, your strength, that you shepherd us and guide us. Thank you for calling us to be a church that continues in prayer, in season and out of season, when it is joy-filled and when we have no one else to turn to. Thank you for being a mighty and gracious God the one who is true and faithful. Father, we lift all of these concerns, especially concerns that may have been upon our hearts or upon our hearts even now, have not been shared openly. Receive them as we bring them before your throne. And may our prayers be a fragrant offering that ascends to you in your glory. These things and more we ask in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus who has called us and taught us as his church to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
bear in mind that our noisy offering in the little red buckets that you find out in the entryway um, continues to be for assistance in Ukraine. Um, and uh, as you can imagine, that's going to continue to be a huge need in the weeks and months and even years ahead. Uh, perhaps you might have noticed in the paper or seen it other places, I, I was struck by a reading a little article about a church in the Bloomington Normal area that has been packaging seeds. And part of that ministry, uh, seeds are distributed in lots of places, but part of that ministry uh, is going to be taking seeds to the Ukraine. And it struck me, um, those of you who are familiar with the agricultural Realities know that Ukraine is one of the largest grain exporters in the world. And uh, there's going to be a lot of challenges in this next couple of years ahead because of what's been taking place. So I might need to eat a little bit less bread. And uh, I don't mean that I can probably use a little less bread, truthfully. <laughs> But well, they need to find ways to continue to do sacrificially. Or whether it's Ukraine or other parts of Africa that have depended upon Ukraine that won't be able to receive wheat from them in the coming years. So please continue to do what you can. I mean, thank you for what you do. Which leads me to, I want to share with you a note. I received a letter the other day. Shelly actually gave it to me because I didn't open the envelope. I just figured it was memorial money for the church. But there was a letter as well of the memorial money. And, uh, a young, well, a woman, <laughs> I'm young, a young woman, she's about my age, who grew up in this church. Uh, and doesn't live here anymore, but she and her husband and family have been active members of the church where they live. Uh, sent a really nice note to us. And she emphasized that she wanted us to wanted me to convey to you how much her family appreciates your care for her parents over the last few years. Um, whether it be the women's group uh, doing special things or uh, serving birthdays and celebrating just cards and notes that were sent over the several years of declining health it struck me, you know, that there are times, especially when people grow up here and go off somewhere else. It's good for you, for us, to remember. But that's not a wasted investment. The ministry that those folks continue to share where they are living today has been shaped and formed by your witness and your service. That light of Christ that shines in other places always has a source. And you have and continue to be a source of light and encouragement to others. So we see that encouragement, and that can hopefully stir you up to maybe look out towards Easter. Try to find somebody to invite to come and be a part of those special celebrations, or maybe come and Enjoy the Easter time. Thank you for your giving that you give so generously. Would you pray with me? Father God, we do thank you. Especially for reminders of how folks' lives have been touched by faithful service, teaching, sharing. When we are feeling as if Perhaps things have passed by. Stir up in us, O oh God, that reminder that truly the best days are before us in your presence. But also many of the good days are yet before us in the ministry we're called to share here in this community with our families and with people we've not even yet met. Bring glory and honor 
And may Jesus always be honored through our giving and sharing of ourselves. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many 
of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. <laughs> you really have to come down this morning. We've got something really unusual to do today. All right, so I, I, I told you, as I had to sing along this morning, that we were going to come back to this song, Wash My Hands This Morning. So, we got to take a short field trip, so don't sit down. While we're gone, you all need to share with somebody next to you. If that means you have to lean over the pew a little bit, that's okay. Share with somebody next to you recently a time when you really needed to wash your hands. All right? Come on, guys. <clears throat> Showing off left field. Over in right field. Showing off right field. Yeah. 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 Crazy. All right, we're back. All right, that is enough. All right, so mom and dad, they did not touch it or play with it, so they don't need to wash their hands. But what did we see outside of the office lying on the cement? A dead. Female cardinal. <laughs> now, these guys went and watched some baseball games this, this past week, right? Yeah. So, one of the first things, in uh, my brain, there's no explaining it, but one of the first things I thought when I walked out was, somebody doesn't know me very well. <laughs> somebody must think I'm a cardinal fan. <laughs> <laughs> and the cardinal, and the cardinal outside the door. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I don't, I don't want to suggest that you should take that as an omen, but if you are a Cardinal fan, <laughs> Well, who are some of the really exciting baseball players that you guys like to call these days? You don't know? Well, let's see. If we, let's just stick with the Cardinals for a moment. If we were going to go to a Cardinal game, would we, would we be watching Lou Brock? Why not? Because you don't like the Cardinals. You need to buy out there. I know, I know you guys probably never heard of Lou Brock. Yes, so. Huh? You're dating me. I'm dating you. Still there? Well, if you're a Cub fan, which I know your dad's a Cub fan. Are you a Cub fan? All right. Would, would you be going to watch Ron Santo play? <laughs> no, no, probably for the same reason you wouldn't go see the Ron play. <laughs> <laughs> well, they aren't there anymore. I'm talking about guys that died. You know, how would I expect you to know about them, right? Well, more important than just in sports, now, I suspect that you've probably heard your dad, your mom, your grandparents talk about some of the people that they really liked to follow when they were younger. You ever hear people tell stories about things? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's part of the reason why we're here. Because it's important for us to share stories, not just stories, but stories about the truth of what God is doing in our lives. Not just in the past, but now. I, I, I had everybody try to sing along with me that song, I Wash My Hands This Morning, because it's one of those little songs that we used to do a lot with our children, and they're teaching their grandchildren. Before, before you really even fully understand what Jesus has done for us so that we know that Jesus wants to do something really wonderful in our lives for us. And during Lent, one of those symbols that we use, we've been using for several weeks now, is what? The bird? <laughs> What's the, what's the thing that I've given you to munch on over the last few weeks? Pretzels, right? Remember? What did they, way, 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 way back, hundreds of years ago, remember how we talked about that, how pretzels got their shape? People in the church, somebody figured out that if you folded that bread, you could make a pretzel shape, and that was a reminder of praying. And so we've been using that. Well, today I have a little different pretzel. Last week we had chocolate covered pretzels, right? Well, today we have pretzels that, using the scripture image, Jesus makes us white as snow. In fact, we even said about that just in the last hymn. His blood washes us bright as snow. So, Actually, you might as well take another one. It's already having been great. So let's pray. Let's pray for a moment. Okay? Lord God, we, we want to thank you, first of all, for beautiful birds. And we're sad that for whatever reason that cardinal has died. But we also want to thank you for reminding us in life of the beauty and the goodness Jesus offers us. So if there's anything that we need to allow you to wash and cleanse in us, we just bring that to you this morning, and I pray that you continue to bless and strengthen these young men as they grow in wisdom and truth and stature before you and before others. 
and help them to always know the joy of being able to turn to you in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks for coming down. The account is except probably familiar. You, you, the basics are, you know, we have this father who has these sons, the older son, and, and we try not to get bogged down in our questions of history and tradition, but the reality was the older son was going to inherit the majority of his father's possessions and wealth. And for whatever reasons,
goes to his father, as we read, and, and asks him for his inheritance. And his father, maybe surprisingly, decides to give it to him. Sends him off. The son goes with him. He says, send him off. Let me say that again. The son, after it says, after a brief time, decides to leave. He leaves his father and his brother's homeland and he goes off. And just, we, we often get bogged down and settle in in this spot and never get out. Um, he goes off and he lives a sordid life, does all kinds of things that he shouldn't do. And eventually, he runs out of money. He has nothing. And if you've, if you've never been there, and I'm not suggesting this is a good thing to happen, but if you've never been there, if you think that the way to win friends and influence people is by buying them, it doesn't work. They will be your friends as long as you have money. <coughs> Sometimes not even that. But when you run out of money, they disappear. I learned that in the carnival a long time ago. <laughs> and he was left with nothing in a strange land. And so, not just literally giving up, he went and found somebody trying to find a job, and he was sent out to feed pigs. The cover photo, the cover photo on the program was about the only thing I could find. And, you know, it's interesting how, uh, because of our bias, and, and it, you know, good or bad doesn't really matter, but our bias around historical things in the church. There's not lots of church art with pigs in it. <laughs> anyway, this is a picture that just kind of depicts maybe what this might have been like. I don't know if the pigs would look that good, though. <laughs> but anyway, something that would have gone against every grain of his upbringing. Because, you know, in, in that tradition, hogs were considered to be unclean. And so just literally caring for them would make you unclean. But that really is not the issue, is it? The issue is, even though he's given a job, nobody gives him any food. And, and he obviously is not earning enough to be able to even buy food. And so when he came to himself, the, the NIV that we, we read doesn't use that phrase, but it's literally the phrase in the original language. When he came to himself, he said, have you come to yourself? We, we talked last week, and, and, and this... This is also, as well, this text, about opening the door of repentance. When, when we are in such a place that we discover that we cannot make it on our own, that life is not going to be something we master, and you can learn that when you're really young, or some folks don't learn it until, you know, some folks, you don't know if they ever learn it. But there is that assurance. God's Spirit is always working. God's Spirit was working on this young man. God doesn't force us, but always works to try to woo and draw us to come to ourselves, to become aware of the condition of our lives, how it is with our soul, how it is with our body, how it is with our mind, the whole person. And this young man, when he came to himself, 
realized that there was a better life. Even going home, as painful as that probably, you know, and, and you can kind of let your mind dwell on this, might have been. He knew that he would be better off to return home and be his father's servant than to stay where he was. Now, the, the reality of our lives, if, if we pay attention around us, and maybe even here for us, but certainly around us, is that there are a lot of folks that can relate to this. We all have some brokenness in our life, and, and it, as we look at the world, it, it's easier, of course, for us to identify that. I mean, it, it's easy to identify the brokenness in um, governments and authoritarian individuals like we see today in the news. It, it's easy to recognize that failure, that arrogance, that demand to have their way. But that's not all story. Because if we, if we are attentive to the things of God, God shows us that that is never the end. That is never the end. And so, it's important Repentance is essential for healing and for new life. And that's one of the reasons why you and I, the church, followers of Jesus, is so important for us to be sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Because there are plenty of folks, there's plenty of fresh sin, there's plenty of sorrow and brokenness, there's plenty of folks seeking after things that they think will satisfy. And we know that sooner or later, they will arrive at a place where that's not true. To come to oneself and say, I would be better. I would be better. And that's, that's the challenge. Because not everybody knows the better. That's why Jesus told the parable. Because the people were so busy arguing with him about what well, he was sharing with them about loving God and loving each other. That he had to share with them in a way that might make it easier for them to make the connection and understand. Now I'm not talking about trying to make everyone live a certain way or be the way you want them to be. I'm sharing with you the reality that God has invested in each one of us and is wooing and drawing us all into an opportunity to new life. We've got to come to ourselves. We've got to be honest with ourselves. And so, you, you know the rest of that account? The young man goes home, and even before he gets home, his father, who has been loving him from a distance when he could no longer see him, praying and earnestly desiring that maybe out there somewhere he's still alive, he sees him. And he runs and hugs him. Again, it says literally in the text, squeezes him around the neck. And celebrates that his son isn't dead. He's alive. And as the son begins to try to say to his father, Father, I've sinned against God and against you. I'm not worthy to be your son. His father stops him. And calls his servants. And they begin to celebrate. Not because of any reason that the son had done something. The father never once 
tries to lift up the failure of the son as being good somehow or another. There's never any question or suggestion that what the son has done wasn't a terrible waste or wrong. It simply is that the father loves the son and is glad he's alive and has come home. Because the son knows. And his father extends to him a grace that the son doesn't expect. Knows he doesn't deserve. And then the part of the kingdom of God that we often so struggle with. The older son, towards the end of the day when he comes home, he hears... He hears the celebration and he asks what's going on and he's told, your, your young, your brother came home and your father's killed the fatted calf and they're having a big old party. And he's angry as angry can be. Won't, won't go near the house or the tent or whatever it was. So the father goes out to him. Come on in, please. No. This, your son, let's say my brother, your son, squandered all of his living, your living, with prostitutes, other terrible things. And you throw a party when he comes home. You can, you can almost hear what doesn't get into the story. Dad, I thought you taught us better than that. But he was dead. And now he's alive. Just like in every generation. But right now, you and I, the Church of Jesus Christ, we live in a challenging time when folks are chasing after all kinds of false gods. After all kinds of distractions, things that seem to be tantalizing and more important, we all wrestle with wondering what's wrong with the next generation, whether we're in it or whether it's behind us. And yet, God continues to be present, wooing and drawing and pouring out upon us good news. But there's life in Jesus. That when we come to that place, whether we're the older brother, who I would suggest was probably just as lost as the younger brother, just in a different way. Because, and, and, and don't, don't diminish that. Let me share with you what C.S. Lewis had to say about the older brother's affliction. It was pride. According to Christian teachers, the greatest evil is pride, unchastity, anger, greed, drunkenness. Those things are mere flea bites. It was through pride that the devil became the devil. Pride leads to every other vice. It's the complete anti-God state of mind. Does this seem exaggerated? If so, think it over. I pointed out a moment ago in his writings, more pride in one hand, the more one dislikes pride in others. In fact, if you want to find out how proud you are, the easiest way is to ask yourself, how much do I dislike it when other people snub at me or refuse to notice me? or shove their oar in, or patronize me, or show off. The point is, each person's pride is in competition with everyone else's pride. It's because I want to be the big noise at the party, that I'm so annoyed when someone else gets all the attention. Two of a trade never agree. Now what you want to get clear is that pride is at its essence competitive. It's competitive by its very nature. Well, the other vices are competitive only by accident. Pride gets no pleasure out of having something 
only on having more of it than the next man. We say that people are proud of being rich or clever or good looking, but they're not. They're proud of being richer or cleverer or better looking than others. If everyone else became equally rich or clever or good looking, there'd be nothing to be proud of. It's the comparison that makes you proud. The pleasure of being above the rest. Once the element of competition is gone, pride is gone. That's why I say pride is essentially competitive. Greed may drive men into competition if there's not enough to go around. But a proud man, even when he's got more than he can possibly want, will still try to get more to assert his power. A lot, of, a lot of things, the evils that we see in the world today are pride. And it affects governments, it affects national leaders, and it unfortunately affects us as well in churches as we seek to serve and be the people of God in the community. And as Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God, he was reminding us, he was reminding the people that the Father has chosen to give us a wonderful and holy life. The Father has made it possible for us to have far more than we deserve, far more abundantly than we can imagine. And that the Father delights and exalts when lost sons and daughters come home. And the Father loves and cherishes the faithfulness of the older brothers and sisters. But if we're going to live in the kingdom of God, we need to come to ourselves so that we can come home. And we can't live with proud and stubborn hearts. We need to allow the love of God to fill us to be able to celebrate the life that Jesus offers to us and to all. And to teach and to share that truth. As you wrestle with the hard things in life today, to be the church that is able to say, truthfully, not everything is right. But we know a Father who will put us right in the grace and mercy of Jesus. Let's pray with me for a moment. Father God, as we come before you this morning, as we think about our hearts, as we think about the hearts, as maybe it's been so much easier to the hearts of others around us, first of all, we just simply want to ask you, Lord, have your way. If there's something about my life, about my attitude, about my conduct that is keeping me from living in the fullness that Jesus has made possible, help me to come to myself and to come home again or for the first time to Jesus. And Lord, gracious Father, help us, help us to allow your Holy Spirit to always speak truth to our hearts and our minds, especially when it's so easy to be harsh toward others. Help us to remember. Help us to be willing to share that truth. And to continue to look, to continue to be knowing that you are that God that never gave up looking. Because sometimes it seems Folks, take an awful long time. But you've shown us, Father, that you are willing to give us all the days as long as we have breath. But we must come home. Help us to share that truth, that love, that mercy, to always be able to share with folks how precious and wonderful you are. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is My Faith Looks Up to Thee. As we sing together, let's give praise to God for His goodness.